the aircraft initially climbs to 670 feet. Then he lowers the nose a bit. The aircraft starts descending again. The captain, who already steered with him, now takes full control. First he lifts the nose a bit, but then pushes the controls forward. A few seconds later, the aircraft hits the ground at high speed. On the evening of the 11th of May 2010, Afrikia Airways Flight 771 departs from Johannesburg, South Africa for a flight to Tripoli, Libya. On board are 93 passengers and 11 crew members. Among the passengers are 71 Dutch nationals with an onward connecting flight to Amsterdam, the Netherlands. Just before 6 o'clock the following morning, the aircraft approaches Tripoli International Airport. There are three pilots in the cockpit. The first officer on the right was 42-year-old Tarek Musa Abu al Chawachi. He had 4,216 flying hours, including 516 hours on the Airbus A330. The captain on the left was 57-year-old Yusuf Bashir al Saudi. He was hired by Afrikia Airways in 2007 and had 17,016 flight hours, including 516 hours on the Airbus A330. Because of the length of the flight, 37-year-old Nazim Al Mabruk Al Taruni was the relief first officer, so if the first officer wanted rest, he could take over. He had 1,866 flight hours, including 516 hours on the Airbus A330. The landing runway of Tripoli International runs west to east and air traffic control directs Flight 771 for a landing in an easterly direction on runway 09. At this end of the runway, only non-precision approaches can be made. This means the aircraft instruments assist the pilots to get lined up with the runway, but the landing itself has to be performed manually. Tripoli is Afrikia's home base, so the pilots are well acquainted with the airfield. The cockpit voice recordings reveal that no firm procedure for landing was established. The approach to runway 09 is guided by some radio beacons for position reference. The beacon Tango Whiskey, at four nautical miles from the threshold, is the final approach fix where the descent to the runway must start. En route to Tango Whiskey, the captain and co-pilot discuss whether they will fly the approach managed by the computer or following a selected glide path. The landing procedure should have been long chosen by this stage. Initially, the co-pilot sets a managed landing Over the radio, a pilot who has just landed at Tripoli calls to warn the captain about limited visibility due to low cloud layers at short final. The co-pilot selects a three-degree glide path and subsequently disables the managed descent. The selected glide path should have started at Tango Whiskey, but he activates it immediately. More than one mile short, Therefore, the aircraft descends too early and is on a course to reach the ground well before the runway threshold. The other pilots don't notice this mistake. At Tango Whiskey, no one notices the aircraft is too low. As a matter of fact, the very same cockpit crew with the same aircraft had a similar incident a few weeks earlier, where they also descended to runway 09 too soon and had to abort the approach. This incident was not reported by the crew and not noted by Afrikia Airways. At 720 feet, the aircraft is approaching the decision altitude. 100 above. 
This marks the point in the procedure where the runway should be in sight and the crew has to decide whether to continue the approach or abort. As the aircraft descends more than one nautical mile short, they don't see the runway. Minimum. Nonetheless, the captain commands to continue. The co-pilot does not abort the approach. At 280 feet, a ground proximity warning sounds. Too low terrain. This time, the co-pilot decides to go around. He adds full power, pulls the nose, and lifts the gear. The aircraft initially climbs to 670 feet. Then, he lowers the nose a bit. The aircraft starts descending again. The captain, who already steered with him, now takes full control. First, he lifts the nose a bit, but then pushes the controls forward. A few seconds later, the aircraft hits the ground at high speed. Too low terrain. Sink rate. Pull up. 